Hi guys, today we are going to be reading Front Desk Chapter 7. If you have the book, please follow along. It will give you a better understanding of what I'm reading. I try not, I try not to think about this super Mr. Yao and Jason for the, the rest of the day. But it was extremely difficult. How could they just change the terms like that? Not whenever a customer returned the key. Instead of getting $5, we're hardly getting anything. I counted the keys in my hand. There were eight. I knew I checked in 12 people yesterday. The other keys must still be in the rooms. I hopped off the stool and went out the back to investigate. I found three key, three of the keys in the rooms. The customer just left them there and went on their way. But I could not find the key to room nine. I looked everywhere and there was absolutely no key in the room. The and the customer was long gone. Did they accidentally take the key? I walked over to the laundry room where my parents were washing and the towels and sheets. It was a big room way in the back of the motel, which ran, which had an industrial washing machine and dryer that ran 24 seven. And it made an awful grinding noise, like it was drying metal screws and not sheets. Over the noise, I could still hear my parents talking. Please, sir, we really want the, we still really want the job, my mom mimicked. My dad, why didn't you just kneel before him? Fine, you want to quit? Let's quit, my dad said. Let's call him right now and, and quit. You know we can't quit, quit, my mom said. Nia's starting school tomorrow. At the sound of my name, I thought about turning around and leaving. I hated hearing my parents argue. They hadn't really done it in China, but since we we came to America, it was getting harder and harder to avoid. I cleared my throat. Hey, Mom. Hey, Dad. Mia, my dad said, said spinning around. He tried to look all happy, like he hadn't just been fighting. We were just talking, he said. I wanted to say, say to them, it's okay. You argue sometimes. I get it. Um... Room nine left, but he, but he didn't leave his key. I told them, "What should we do? Wait, so there's no key? We'll get out. Well, well, there's a master key. I reminded him, but I can't give that out. All right, let's see what we can do." My mom said. My mom follow, my mom followed me out of the laundry room. When we got back to the front desk, she we opened up all the cabinets. We eventually found a white box. Buried in the back drawer of the drawer with the words official spare keys in permanent marker. M my mom took out the box and opened it. Sure enough, there were 30 official spare keys inside, one for each row. Here's room nine, I said, picking it up and clutching it in my hand. Great, my mom said. I was about to hang the key on its little hook next to the others. Keys. When it occurred to me, why would we, we couldn't give this key out? This was our only spare key. What if someone took it? My mom sighed. We had no choice but to call Mr. Yao. My as my mom explained the situation to him over the phone, I tried to squeeze in next to her to hear. What's he saying? I asked, but my mom just shook her head. I went over to my room and picked up an instrument in, in time to hear Mr. Yao exclaim. What kind of idiot doesn't charge a deposit on the key? That would be me. For the record, I didn't charge a deposit on the keys because, well, who charges deposit on keys? Deposits were for renting bikes and cars. Why would anyone want to steal a key? Mr. Yao told my mom we had to make a new key with the key machine under the front desk. I... My mom and I knelt, knelt down to look for it. We finally found it in in it way in the back. It wasn't actually much of a machine, more like an assortment of big keys, needles, pins, and files, with the, a big metal thing to keep the key to keep the key in place while you worked on it. Leave it, my mom said. After I finish cl finish cleaning all the rooms, I'll make uh, the key. Until then, don't touch it, okay? Don't do not try to make it. I nodded and waited until she went out to the back. 
any adult who says the words don't touch to the kid no should should know it's an invite it's an open invitation to touch it i accepted my mom's invitation and picked up one of the blank keys holding it up to the spare room nine key with all its little ridges and valleys i wondered were we supposed to file the ridges and valleys? Was that how this worked? I gently ran the file across the blank key. To my surprise, it made a little dent. I ran the file again. Another dent. Hey, this wasn't so bad. At, so bad. I, I didn't even need the other metal thing to clamp the key down. I could just do it by holding the key. I filed and filed. With each new dent, I sang, look at me, I'm making a key. I was having so much fun that I forgot to look where I was going. I was filing and accidentally filed my finger. Ow, I cried. I dropped the file and the key and held up my throbbing finger. The skin of the index finger had been rubbed raw and it was bleeding. I ran to the bathroom to get a band-aid, but there weren't any. So I took some toilet paper and wrapped it around my finger. The toilet pa paper turned bright red in seconds. I grabbed more toilet paper and held it around the, it to wound, even though it hurt like crazy. Eventually, the bleeding stopped. I wrapped the toilet paper in scotch tape around and around with my tiny mummy finger all set. I sat back down at the front desk and glanced at the unfinished key. I should have stopped right here. I should have put the key away and waited for my mom. That would have been the sensible thing to do. But it was, I had this thing where, where if I started something, I had to finish it. It, it didn't matter what it was, books, Chinese chess, or the last strawberry on the candy, candied stewards I used to eat back home. When I started doing something, I finished it. And so I picked up the blank key again with my gigantic finger held high out of the way. I started filing. Ten minutes later, I was done. It wasn't perfect, I admit. I admit. But and it wasn't pretty by any standards. But when I held it up to the spare, to the spare, to the blank, it had all the same ridges and valleys. As I stood back to admire my creation, a customer came in. Got any rooms in the back? He said. Asked. I I did indeed, and proudly handed him my new key. What the hell? The customer yelled ringing the the office a couple minutes later the key you gave me doesn't work as it soon it as it turned out through i had filed the ridges to perfection i i forgot to smooth out the edges so when the customer put the key in it got stuck i rushed out and the back to help him. We pushed him and we pulled. Finally, the, we managed to jam it in, into the doorknob and then lock the room. When the customer laid eyes on the room, his face fell. This is a lot smaller than I was expecting, he said. I looked around the room. There was a bed, dresser, and television, a small, small table in the chair. He was modest, sure, but what else did he need? Why don't you get settled in and come back in 10 minutes and I'll give you a new key? I asked. Mr. Lewis looked like he still wasn't sure about the room and the whole stuck key thing. So I threw in and I'll bring you a free soda. How's that? He perked up and said, okay. As I walked back to the front desk, I shook my head. Why was it that everything in America had to do with money? People wouldn't give you back your key unless you charged them a deposit. They'd hold a simple mistake over your head unless you get them a free soda. At my old school in China, let's see, okay. 
At my old school in China, there was this kind elderly man who lived near the building. Every day, he'd give me a popsicle on my way home in exchange for telling me what I learned in school that day. That was it. No money, no credit cards, just, hey, how was school? I missed, I missed pops, popsicle, Grandpa. There was no, no one like that here. Here, everything had a price, even kindness. No sooner had I got gotten back to the front office than Mr. Lewis called me back to his room. Come here, back, come back right now, he said into the phone. With, from the urgency in his vo voice, I thought it was a real emergency. Had the smoke alarm come on? Did the TV explode? I rushed back to room nine and found Mr. Mr. Lewis standing in the bathroom, stare, star, stare, staring at the trash can. Do you see that? He asked, pointing at a small plastic trash I'm noticing in the bathroom. I stared into the black tin. I couldn't see anything. See what? That, he shouted. He picked up the trash and shoved it in my face. I squinted into the darkness and saw what appeared to be a single long string. It looked like a dental floss. You see it? Mr. Lewis asked. Yes, I see it now, I said. Th this room has not been properly cleaned, Mr. Lewis said. I assure you it has. Clearly it hasn't, or we would ha never be having this conversation. I... I would be, I would like another room, a bigger room. Sir, all our rooms are the same size. Mr. Lewis crossed his arms and said, I don't believe you. I would like you to open up every single room and I will pick one up for myself. That's when I lost it. Maybe it was a, my throbbing finger or two refunds or Mr. Yao changing the deal, but I couldn't control myself. Sir, that's ridiculous. You can't pick your own room. This, is, this isn't a salad bar. As soon as I said that or those words, I knew I had gone too far, but it was too late to snatch them back. Well, Mr. Lewis said, fuming, if that's the way it's going to be, then I would like a refund. No! Please, Mr. Lewis, I pleaded with him. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said said that thing about the salad bar. I don't even, I don't know why I said that. I, squ I squeezed my eyes shut and confessed. I actually never been to a salad bar. I've only seen them on TV. Mr. Lewis looked shocked. You never seen, you never been to a salad bar? I shook my head. His, eye, his eyes softened. Why are you doing this? He asked me. Shouldn't you be out playing? I looked away from him. Why were Americans always asking kids to go out and play? In China, kids almost never played. They had to sit for exams starting at an early age. Except for family get-togethers, every minute of school was packed with homework, drilling, revision, and dictation. When I went to first grade in China, I only got two minutes a day to play. That's literally what I said on my schedule. I made for myself 5 to 502 play. I wanted to say to Mr. Lewis that I've actually never played and I didn't intend to start now. The, the other parts of me wanted to say, this is playing. I got to run a motel. What, what, was there any better way to play? In the end, I simply said, I like my job very much. Mr. Lewis looked slightly embarrassed and said, Of course you do. I'm sorry. He looked around the room once more. You know what? This will do just fine. He said, Really? I asked. I could not believe my ears. And I'm sorry I gave you such a hard time. Here, let me empty that for you, I said, taking the trash can from his hand. I went in outside, quickly emptied the can in the dumpster, and placed it in, back in Mr. Lewis in Mr. Lewis's bathroom. Is there anything I can do to make your stay more pleasant? I asked him. Mr. Lewis thought for a second. Then he held up a finger and announced, pillows, pillows. Pillows? Yes, I need four pillows, two under my head, one for between my leg and one to hug. 
I smiled, done. I hope you'll come back for chapter eight. Bye-bye.